Hey yo, what's up everybody? It's Coach Hicks. Today we're going to be talking about shading. We want to know, especially for the defensive backs, what's the difference between an inside shade and an outside shade, and which one should you use depending on what your situation is. Well, the first thing is, is the definition of a shade is how you align on your player. So, if I come up here and I have my receiver, who's going to be a big O, and then I'm going to have my defensive back, so I'm going to have my defensive back here, let's say I call my corner back here. So there's three different ways that my backer or my back can align on my receiver. The first thing is he can line up head up, which is essentially a head to head alignment. He's lining up square to his receiver. The other way that he can align is he can align with an inside shade. So if I split the receiver in half, an inside shade essentially means that either the head of your defensive back is going to be lined up on the inside shoulder of the receiver. So in that case, that'll be an inside shade where he's taking up an inside, really, an inside position on his, on his receiver. Otherwise, we can have an outside shade. So an outside shade is the opposite in which your head or your inside foot is going to be lined up on the outside foot of the receiver. So that's the difference in terms of the alignment. So you have your head up, you have your inside shade, and your outside shade. Now, the question is, when do you use which, and what are the advantages and disadvantages of both? So if I draw a mock sideline over here, and I have my receiver here, and then I'm going to have my cornerback, and I'm going to set my cornerback up with an inside shade. Let's start with an inside shade. So if I have my cornerback lined up here with an inside shade, what that does is that enables me to prevent an inside release. So if my receiver decides he wants to run a slant, my cornerback is right there to break up the pass. The same thing goes if he decides he wants to try and run a five in, well, he's running into the defender. So we break up a lot of inside position. Uh, the same likewise for a post. If we try and run a post, well, the reality is the cornerback is almost playing right underneath the post. Makes it a very tough pass for the quarterback to try and make, especially if you have a free safety who's over here playing over the top. That window is a, is a very tight one, and there's very few quarterbacks that can actually make that accurate throw. However, the disadvantage of playing with an inside shade or an inside positioning, also known as inside leverage, is that the cornerback is a step outside for the outside breaking balls, which means that if we have a corner route, our cornerback is stuck playing chase. The same thing for an out route, a comeback, a quick out. All of these routes become very open. And remember, when we're talking about Canadian football, sometimes this is a very big danger, especially for playing to the strong side of the field. And the strong side of the field also happens to be the wide side. Now, what that means is that instead of the sideline being here, the sideline actually ends up out here. And so that becomes a lot more field to cover. So depending on your situation, you might have to evaluate as a coach whether or not that's one of the advantages, whether or not that plays to your advantage or your disadvantage. Are you going to have a high tendency of outside breaking routes with your cornerbacks playing inside shade? You might be in a dangerous situation there that you might need to think about. So now, if we talk about the outside shade, it's pretty much the opposite situation. So if I have a cornerback who's going to be lined up on the outside shade of a receiver, what I've then done now is in this case, I've taken away all of the outside breaking route possibilities, which means that, well, the out is difficult, the longer out is difficult, corner route, and even the fade sometimes. Uh, the fade becomes a little difficult because of the fact that what we're actually doing with the outside shade is that we're funneling 
the pass plays and we're funneling the receiver inside to our help. And so again, we have to remember that oftentimes we're gonna have a free safety who's just gonna be lurking around over here and that free safety's responsibility is to defend any deep threats. So the cornerback here is gonna be almost pushing the receiver inside to the help, which is the number one goal of an outside shade. So if you're playing with an outside leverage on a receiver, your goal and the goal of all of your defenders is to push the receiver inside to the help. So you need to find where the help is and you push it inside. This is great sometimes in cover one, especially in cover two. But in any sort of coverage where there's help on top or there's help inside, outside shade can play to your advantage, but that always determines on, that always depends on the game plan, the situation, and where your receiver is lining up. So if I give you a prime example of where outside shade is one of the best choices you can use, is let's say, um, for example, we're gonna be in a goal line situation. I'm gonna draw a half line here. And I'm gonna have a number two receiver on the line. And I'm gonna have a number one receiver over here off the line. So let's say, for example, we're taking man coverage, man to man coverage. Well, my halfback isn't gonna come over here and align inside shade because if we're in man to man and number one decides to take my cornerback, clear him out, get him out of the way. Well, if number two releases on an out, my halfback is stuck chasing. And that's almost a sure completion. So in this kind of situation, what my halfback is gonna wanna do is he's gonna, in Canadian football, we often tell him to line up three by three, which means he's three yards back and three yards out from the tight end or from the inside receiver. And in this situation, well, we have the outside route covered because just by alignment, he has leverage on that pattern. And then at the same time, well, if there's an inside release, a slant, for example, well, we have linebackers inside. So we have a linebacker here and we should at least have one other linebacker here with a free safety over the top somewhere. So in that case, in that situation, the outside, outside leverage or the outside shade does play to your advantage. So those are two of the prime differences. Those are the differences between outside shade and inside shade. It's all about the leverage, it's all about the situation. Oh yeah, there's one more thing. The other thing that you need to look at, especially if you're playing as a cornerback, is you need to think about where your receiver's lined up. So if the sideline is here, and your receiver lines up all the way out here, well, your assignment may have been to play outside shade, but it doesn't really make much sense in this situation. So sometimes as a cornerback, with this situation, you're gonna to wanna to line up on the inside and play inside shade. The reason why is because when your receiver has decided to line himself up all the way outside like that, chances are the route's coming inside. And if the route's not coming inside, well, there's an only a, there's a limited number of routes that you can run with an outside release. So if he still continues to reach outside and not try and cross your face, you know it's either an out, a comeback, or a fade. That's it. So in that case, you're gonna shut down the inside routes where there's a, little, a, a, a few more opportunities, a few more possibilities that he can run, and you're gonna switch it up to an inside shade cut off the inside, even though your original game plan, your original coaching may have been to play outside shade, you have to look at the situation. It's the same thing where, for example, if your receiver is lined up all the way in here, right? Well, as a cornerback in that situation, inside shade might not necessarily be the best idea because, well, you've left a whole lot of field for you to cover out there, especially if you're in man-to-man. So, that's Inside Shade versus Outside Shade. I'm Coach Hicks. I hope you liked that video. Like, subscribe, check out the other videos. Check out the videos on coverages, passing schemes, whatever else. Let me know what else you want to see. I'm here for you. And so I'll try and get some videos out there. Thanks for watching. Signing out.